Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to this Ash Wednesday service. And Ash Wednesday begins the penitential season of Lent. And we're going to be doing these. I, last year you did it bilingually. Pastor Miguel and I will be switching off, and you can follow along in the worship order of worship as it's printed. But we're doing this. And, and part of this, what we're doing is after the sermons, when you come up for communion, you will receive the sign of the cross in your forehead. In confession, we confess that we are ashes, and to ashes we return, and our sinfulness. But then as you come to communion, you receive the body and blood of Jesus, reminding you that when we humble ourselves, we are lifted up with Jesus' grace and his blessings, now and always. And welcome to this service. Buenas noches. Bienvenidas y bienvenidos hermanos al servicio de miércoles de ceniza, el inicio del tiempo de la cuaresma. Vamos a tener un servicio bilingüe en los dos idiomas, en el boletín está toda la información y un poco más adelante vamos a tener la imposición de las cenizas y de una vez inmediatamente después la comunión. Entonces sean todas y todos bienvenidos a este santo servicio. We join in our first hymn, hymn number 744, and we're going to sing simultaneously English and Spanish, three verses of Amazing Grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of Father, and of the Son, and of the Spirit. Amen. Even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and a Aún ahora dice el Señor, vuélvanse a mí con todo su corazón, con ayuno, llanto y lamento. Rasgad vuestro corazón y no vuestras vestiduras. Vuélvanse al Señor su Dios, porque él es clemente y compasivo, lento para la ira y grande en amor. Y se arrepiente de enviar la calamidad. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. 
where I recognize my shameful deeds. They haunt me day and night. Against you and you only have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgments against me is just. Ten piedad de mí, oh Dios, por tu amor inagotable, por tu gran compasión, borra la mancha de mis pecados. Lávame de mi culpa, purifícame de mi pecado. Persiguen día y noche contra ti y contra ti solo he pecado. He hecho lo malo delante de tus ojos, será probado en lo que dices, y tu juicio contra mí es justo. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me, but you desire honesty from the heart, so you can teach me to be wise in my inmost being. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Porque yo nací pecador, sí, desde el momento en que mi madre me concibió. Pero tú deseas la honestidad del corazón, para que puedas enseñarme a ser sabio en lo más íntimo de mi ser, Purifícame de mis pecados y seré limpio. Lávame y seré más blanco que la nieve. Oh, devuélveme mi alegría otra vez. Me has quebrantado. Ahora déjame regocijarme. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence. And don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. No sigas mirando mis pecados. Quita la mancha de mi culpa. Crea en mí un corazón limpio, oh Dios. Renueva un espíritu recto dentro de mí. No me destierre de tu presencia y no quites de mí tu santo espíritu. Devuélveme el gozo de tu salvación y hazme dispuesto a obedecerme. On this day of ashes, we reflect on our lives and seek God's forgiveness. En este día de cenizas, reflexionamos sobre nuestra vida y buscamos el perdón de Dios. One of the great joys I have as a pastor is for those who confess their sins to share with them the grace of Jesus who forgives you totally, absolutely. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Una de las grandes bendiciones que tenemos es recordar lo que Cristo hizo en la cruz por nosotros que Él murió en la cruz para darnos el perdón de los pecados y la garantía de la vida eterna. Como ministro de la iglesia les anuncio ese perdón completo de todos sus pecados en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Dinner passage, Jesus is there, but there are different people at all of these passages. And this is from Luke 7. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flank of ointment, and standing behind it at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet, with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she's a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Say it, teacher. 
A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I suppose for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged correct, rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the gospel of our Lord. El Santo Evangelio, queridas hermanas y hermanos, está escrito en el capítulo 7 de San Lucas, comenzando en el versículo 36. Uno de los fariseos invitó a Jesús a comer, así que fue a la casa del fariseo y se sentó a la mesa. Ahora bien, vivía en aquel pueblo una mujer que tenía fama de pecadora. Cuando ella se enteró de que Jesús estaba comiendo en casa del fariseo, se, se presentó con un frasco de alabastro lleno de perfume. Llorando, se arrojó a los pies de Jesús, de manera que se los bañaba en lágrimas. Luego se los secó con los cabellos, también se los besaba y se los ungía con el perfume. Al ver esto, el fariseo que lo había invitado dijo para sí, si este hombre fuera profeta, sabría quién es la que lo está tocando y qué clase de mujer es una pecadora. Entonces Jesús le dijo de manera de respuesta, Simón, tengo algo que decirte. Dime maestro, respondió. Dos hombres le debían dinero a cierto prestamista. Uno le debía 500 monedas de plata y el otro 50. Cuando no tenían con qué pagarle, les perdonó la deuda a los dos. Ahora bien, ¿Cuál de los dos lo amará más? Supongo que aquel a quien más le perdonó, contestó Simón. Has juzgado bien, le dijo Jesús. Luego se volvió hacia la mujer y le dijo a Simón, ¿Ves a esta mujer? Cuando entra en tu casa, no me diste agua para los pies, pero ella me ha bañado los pies en lágrimas y me los ha secado con sus cabellos. Tú no me besaste, pero ella desde que entré, no ha dejado de besarme los pies. Tú no me ungiste la cabeza con aceite, pero ella me ungió los pies con perfume. Por eso te digo, si ella ha amado mucho, es que sus muchos pecados le han sido perdonados. Pero a quien poco se le perdona, poco ama. Entonces Jesús le dijo a ella, tus pecados quedan perdonados. Los otros invitados comenzaron de entre sí, ¿quién es este? Que hasta perdona pecados tu fe te ha salvado le dijo Jesús a la mujer vete en paz hermanas y hermanos este es el evangelio de nuestro señor una vez más sean todas todos bienvenidos a este día tan especial a este día tan particular donde todos los creyentes estamos reunidos en una iglesia. Estamos celebrando el miércoles de ceniza. El inicio del tiempo de cuaresma y es algo tan importante desde hoy. El día uno donde empezamos a caminar juntos de la mano del Señor. Donde empezamos a recordar tantas maravillas que Dios ha hecho sigue haciendo y seguirá haciendo en la vida de ustedes 
en la vida mía y en la vida de todos los que creemos en su amor, en su misericordia. Cuaresma, nos hemos puesto a pensar qué significa cuare, cuaresma y cuaresma viene de 40, 40 días precisamente empezando hoy, miércoles de ceniza hasta el domingo de palmas, el inicio del tiempo de la semana santa todos estos días que son varios días es un tiempo muy importante para la reflexión para pensar para el arrepentimiento para el ayuno también es un tiempo para la conversión espiritual por eso este tiempo de cuaresma miremoslo todos juntos como el tiempo del perdón, como el tiempo de la reconciliación. Pensemos, ¿qué estamos haciendo nosotros o por qué de pronto no podemos tener paz y tranquilidad en nuestro corazón? ¿Nos falta perdonar a alguien? Este es el tiempo, hermanas y hermanos, para el perdón. Es el tiempo para la comunicación. Y es el tiempo especialmente para unirnos en oración con Dios. Para estar en constante oración con nuestro Salvador. Porque recordamos, así como pasan los años, recordamos qué sucedió hace más de dos mil años. Recordamos cuando el Señor envió a su Hijo a que muriera en una cruz por nosotros. Jesús. Es tu Salvador. Jesús es tu Redentor. Y nosotros somos los escogidos por Dios. Somos privilegiados. Que esa promesa que nos venía hablando. El inicio de la Biblia se cumplió. En el año 1 cuando vino Cristo a salvarnos. Se cumplió en el año 33. Cuando Cristo murió por ti, por mí, por todos. Para darnos la salvación cuando nos pongamos la ceniza un poco más adelante recordemos qué simboliza eso recordemos lo que dice precisamente Génesis 3 19 Génesis capítulo 3 verso 19 polvo eres y al polvo volverás polvo somos y al polvo volveremos cuando me pongo la ceniza estoy recordando que somos personas que estamos en la misericordia del Señor. Somos personas que en algún momento pasaremos a disfrutar esa vida eterna. Pasaremos a disfrutar donde están todos nuestros seres amados y por eso estamos aquí. Estamos aquí porque le dijimos Dios necesitamos estar más cerca de ti y necesitamos Vivir este tiempo como una verdadera fiesta porque si hay algo que el creyente hoy en día celebra es la fiesta del tiempo de la cuaresma. Somos salvos porque Cristo nos salvó verdad somos salvos por la gracia de Dios. Efesios capítulo 2 verso 8 me está diciendo porque por gracia eres salva. Eres salvo y no por medio de las obras sino porque es un regalo de Dios. Recordemos cada año cuando empiece el tiempo de la cuaresma. Recordemos la pasión, la muerte y la resurrección de Cristo. En este tiempo queridas hermanas y hermanos que no se trata solamente de recordar sino se trata también de vivirlo. Así como lo recordamos, vivamos con anhelo, vivamos con devoción, vivamos buscando y teniendo más hambre y sed del Señor. Vivamos diciéndole Señor, ayúdame para estar más cerca a ti. Te necesito Señor, reconocer que necesitamos al Señor, reconocer que no podemos nosotros mismos, eliminar el yo y poner el nosotros Señor necesitamos estar cerca de ti 
una de las cartas del apóstol Pablo es el capítulo 5 de Efesios. Efesios 5.20 dice, dando gracias siempre a Dios el Padre por todo, en el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, dando gracias a Dios en nombre de Jesús, en nombre de su Hijo. Dios Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo es la ceniza que nos vamos a poner en nuestra frente un poco más adelante. Y ahí nos recuerda la salvación, ahí nos recuerda el amor, ahí nos recuerda tantas maravillas que tenemos nosotros y que está consignado aquí en la palabra de Dios. Está consignado en esto que es lo que necesitamos para vivir sanos. Para vivir dando amor al prójimo, para vivir siempre agradecidos y a través de la fe tener certeza de que Dios está contigo. De que no hay que desfallecer porque Dios te ama de una manera incalculable. Él te ha amado siempre, antes de que tú lo conocieras, Él ya te amaba. Por eso vivamos siempre consciente y encontremos refugio. Siempre en la palabra de Dios este es un momento de celebración y así como Cristo murió y resucitó que también todos acá tengamos resurrección nazcamos de nuevo seamos personas limpias transparentes luz seamos y vivamos ante los ojos del Señor de acuerdo a su voluntad miremos a las personas con los mismos ojos como Jesús nos mira a nosotros. Ayudemos al prójimo como Jesús lo hizo en sus 33 años. Pero también sigamos el ejemplo de nuestro Salvador. Una de las cosas que cambia tu vida es la importancia de congregarnos en la iglesia. El domingo, el miércoles, los estudios bíblicos, los eventos en la iglesia... Todas esas cosas le agradan al Señor. Cuando estamos congregados en su nombre recibimos la bendición. Recibimos la recompensa y recibimos sobre todo esa paz que todos necesitamos. Vivamos confiados en Dios. Dejemos las cosas delante del Señor y confiemos en sus tiempos. Que son buenos, agradables y perfectos. Oremos hermanos. Amado Padre Celestial, en este momento, Señor, queremos solamente darte gracias. Gracias, Señor, por tu amor, por tu perdón, por tu misericordia. Ayúdanos a caminar estos 40 días, este tiempo de cuaresma en tus manos, Señor. Perdónanos por nuestros pecados, nuestras culpas, Señor. Y te pedimos esto con un corazón humilde y sencillo en el santo nombre de tu Hijo Jesucristo que es nuestro único Salvador. Amén. El Señor los bendiga y los guarde por siempre. Amén. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Lord, we are in this season, 40 days, journeying to the cross. And Lord, help us to keep our eyes and our hearts in faith upon Jesus, who is our treasure, our hope, our joy, our Savior, our Lord. In his name we pray, amen. Do you know, it's interesting, this, this gospel reading from Luke chapter 7, it makes me think, I, I, I don't know if it's in a book or a lecture, there's a Christian writer named Tony Campolo. And Tony Campolo, I've heard speak in person, great speaker, but I've read a couple of his books and I, I remember this, I don't, re don't remember if it's from a talk he made or from a book, but he was a sociology professor at a secular university. But he was out and out really known throughout the whole university as a devout Christian, standing up for his faith and talking about faith. And it brought a little bit of controversy. He would have sometimes militant atheists attending his classes and just ready to argue with him. 
And one class he talked about was he was teaching a class on something and then he was talking about Jesus and, and culture and he said, Jesus never met a prostitute. The hand jumped up. The student said, you know, I, 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 I think you're wrong there. And opened this passage from Luke chapter 7 and saying, do you know the sinful woman in the Greek in the context, it's, you know what she is? She's a sinner and usually that was the description for prostitutes. And Dr. Campolo said, well, you don't know the nuance of what I'm saying. I'm saying when Jesus met somebody, he didn't look upon them as a prostitute. He never saw anybody as a prostitute. He didn't look at what they did. He looked at them in their heart and in their soul. And, you know, it's interesting thinking about that. And that's a, a big contrast that goes on in this passage. It's because Jesus, I'm sure this woman had seen Jesus. I bet she'd been in a crowd of thousands of people listening to Jesus speak sometime in the, re, in the, near, in the recent past. She heard amazing messages. She may have heard the Sermon on the Mount. With thousands there, she may have witnessed miracles that Jesus had performed. But then all of a sudden at this dinner, she got in the back. And sometimes they'd have chairs when a fancy teacher was in town talking. They'd put chairs around the outside. And she got to be sitting and get out just a little few feet behind Jesus. Leaning against the table, his feet were there. Have you ever had a brush with somebody who is incredibly famous? And she's there just a few feet away from Jesus. And she goes up and kneels down at his feet, bawling her eyes out, tears coming down, washing his feet. And then all of a sudden you're pulling her hair and wiping her feet up, kissing his feet. And then anointing his feet with the perfume that she brought. A gift. And Simon the Pharisee is looking at all this happening. And she knew who that woman was and said, you know what, Jesus, if you're really a prophet, you know what kind of woman she is. She, she's a sinner. And sort of applying, you know, if she's a sinner, well, Simon's not a sinner. Jesus knows everything that's going on in this situation. So Jesus says, let me tell you a story, Simon. There is a money lender, a banker. We'd call him a banker. He loaned somebody 500 denarii. Denarii was about a day's wages, a little over $100. And he loaned somebody else 50 denarii. Neither could pay the money back. But so then the banker said, your debt's forgiven. Have a good day. Chase has never done that for me. I don't know. Maybe you have a bank that deals that way. But, um, and so Jesus asked Simon, who do you think loves the banker more? Well, I suppose the guy who had 500 forgiven rather than the guy who had 50. You're right, said Jesus. You know, I came into your house. You didn't wash my feet. You didn't give me a kiss and embrace me. You didn't anoint my head with oil. But she washed my feet with her tears, wiped them with her hair, kissed me nonstop, anointed my feet with oil. She's loved a lot. She's been forgiven a lot, and so she loves a lot. Do you know there's a danger here? Do you know as I look at about the, the members of Emmanuel Lutheran Church, it's easy to come into a way of thinking like Simon did and thinking, you know, I've been to church, I've been an elder for 47 years. Before that, I was a junior usher. I was an acolyte. I was confirmed... Top of my class in confirmation. He 
You may have sinned little. Don't love Jesus little. Because Jesus' forgiveness is total and it's absolute. And this woman, this prostitute, this sinner, she was amazed that Jesus didn't look at her as a prostitute. He looked at her and saw her as a person. Do you know, I've always took this to heart, you know, and, I, and, and sometimes when I was younger, I made the mistake a lot of times. I asked people, what do you do? And then I, I remember reading this and I said, you know, that's not a good question. I don't like asking people what they do. And I try never to do it anymore. Usually I try to ask people, where have you come, where'd you come from? Where have you lived in your lifetime? And you know what I get? A 25-minute story of their life. With the highs and the lows, the people they love, their family... The grandparent who means everything to them. Their kids. Their older grandkids. And you know, you see them more as a person. You see them more as a child of God. And this woman, when she heard Jesus speak, she didn't see herself as a sinner because, you know what? Jesus came to deal with the sin. And what did he leave her last words? Your faith has saved you. Jesus' grace is amazing. And when you hear him, his forgiveness is amazing. And that's what we celebrate. The Lenten season is journeying to the cross. And and you know what? I, I probably have more sins of omission than sins of commission probably gotten a little mature as my faith but you know what I'm still a sinner and sometimes sins of omission sin that means sin of doing not doing what you're supposed to do and I bet a lot of you that's your primary sin category sins of omission because you know what my right knee hurts and I don't have the energy I used to I'm busy I'm tired ah god you probably have somebody else who's better at doing this you can have, have them take the job The blessing is Jesus said none of those things. He said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And he went to the cross for you, for me, and for that woman who washed his feet. And he looked at her and saw her as a child of God, a sister of faith. And that's how Jesus sees us. In his name, amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this season of Lent as we journey to the cross. Help us to hear Jesus each and every day. For he has the words of eternal life, now and forevermore. We gather now, no, we have our prayers. Would you go, I'll go for, I'll go first. I'm listed first, English is first, so, but let's pray. Lord, what a beautiful evening. And Lord, as we stand in your house, as we gather in your house, we say thank you. Thank you for this season. Help us each and every day to do what we can to draw closer to you. But we thank you that the season celebrates everything that Jesus did to come to us. To save us, to forgive us, to bless us, to love us. Even at the cost of his own life. We say thank you. And Lord, we pray for those who are struggling in faith. We pray for those whose bodies are aching and weak. We pray for those who mourn and grieve. And remind all of us, we stand as people who Jesus looks at and loves, now and forevermore. We pray for all good things. May your will be done. 
And we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Hermanas y hermanos, oremos en estos momentos. Amado Padre Celestial, estamos más que agradecidos, Señor, por este tiempo tan especial. Gracias por tu palabra, gracias por tu mensaje y especialmente gracias por estar con nosotros, Señor. Ayúdanos en este tiempo de cuaresma a estar más cerca de ti, Señor. Ayúdanos con todas las necesidades que tenemos, que tú conoces, Señor. Ayúdanos también a confiar más en ti, Señor, y a dejar todo en tus manos. Que nuestra carga sea liviana, que dejemos todo, Señor, en ti. Bendice cada persona aquí presente, Señor, cada familia, cada niño. Bendice las personas que no pudieron llegar por alguna situación en especial, Señor. Y ayúdanos a seguir viviendo en ese amor tan tranquilo y tan sencillo que tú nos invitas. En tu palabra que está en tus sacramentos, Señor. Y que tenemos la oportunidad todos los días para dar esa buena noticia a todas las personas. Oramos esto, Señor, con acción de gracias. En el precioso nombre de tu Hijo Jesucristo, que es nuestro único Salvador. Amén. Our offerings now for our Lord. rise as we get ready to celebrate communion. The procedure of this, the ushers will lead you with one line coming down the center aisle and Pastor Miguel will put on the ashes on your forehead and then you will come forward for communion. So, And we'll pretty much do continuous like we do later, on, but you'll come and kneel and work our way around and he'll be going with that. So we continue with the celebration of Holy Communion. We say, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. As you prepare a table for us, our cup overflows, and you anoint our heads with oil. Nosotros decimos, ven, Señor Jesús, sé nuestro huésped mientras preparas.
we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured forth for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. sign of the cross upon our foreheads and our hearts.
And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you, keep you steadfast in true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Vamos a recibir la bendición, hermanas y hermanos. El Señor te bendiga y te guarde. El Señor haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti y tenga de ti misericordia. El Señor alce su rostro sobre ti y te dé su paz. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, um, three, two, three, ver three, verses. three verses of Alabare, number 800. <laughs> God's blessings, and we're in Lenten services and dinners all of the six Wednesdays of Lent. And this series, the two languages, will do on Monday, Thursday, as we celebrate the Last Supper, which is on Thursday. But so, God's blessings, everyone. El Señor los bendiga y los guarde por siempre, hermanos. Amen.